It's one of those things which I think completely um, misreads the situation, also misreads the mood of the public. I think, I think the government have kind of internalised this idea that even in situations like this, what the public want to see is being very cautious about any form of migration. But you look at the polls, the support for being very generous in our offer <clears throat> towards Ukrainian refugees, sorry, is very, very strong. And to bog this down in kind of bureaucracy and the insane kind of labyrinthine processes that some people had to follow when they were bringing people out of Afghanistan. It seems like we're rep repeating those mistakes at this point. Mm. Isn't it? This yeah, is it's, not gonna, it's not going to wash with people, that. Well, this is something that Tom and I were, were discussing earlier as well, that because of this, uh, cri uh, this war in Ukraine, we've almost entirely forgotten about the war that is continuing in Afghanistan and that the, the millions of people who are facing starvation, they're freezing to death, they don't have food, they don't have shelter, they're fleeing the Taliban. And there were all those applications for people who had been working with the British government and the British military yeah. in Afghanistan well, we who were have, then not able to, to we, be we given forgotten, safety. We may have forgotten about them as a, as a collective consciousness, mm. but the government's still going to be working on that, surely. Well, you do wonder, because they had a heads up that that was going to happen too. And now, because the, the eye of the public, that attention, that spotlight, that, that scrutiny isn't isn't there necessarily because our news cycle appears to only be able to do one one story of, of importance at, at once. Um, I don't know. I don't know if, if you know, I always people are actually getting the support they need hard. that they deserve. Are we unfairly critical of the Home Office or is it just an Im no, impossible terrible. business to run? I mean, reading the reports and speaking to anyone who's been trying to kind of negotiate this system, particularly in Afghanistan in the recent past, it's, it sounds absolutely horrendous in terms of what it is. And it is just a department that is... You know, formally is very di is very incapable. It seems like of dealing with problems like this. It's very big and all the rest of it. But also, I think politically, there just hasn't been the grip and the leadership to deal with crises. But not for when years, and years, years. Every Home Secretary, mm -hmm. is, you know, comes mm -hmm. under fire for just not running things properly. I mean, the, it, that is one of the problems that is worth admitting to. I mean, it controls everything from the police yeah, to the borders big, to the refugee it? issue. I mean, it's it's huge. But mm. still, there's obvious failings going on regardless of all of that. Yeah, um, agree. What about Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, Tom, in the Sunday's Telegraph? Uh, yeah, don't test us is the slightly bellicose rhetoric here from, from Ben Wallace. I think this really underlines just how high the stakes are here now. He's obviously responding to very heightened rhetoric from the other side. You had Vladimir Putin, as you've been talking about on the show this morning, respond to the sanctions as saying this is essentially a form of warfare, this is economic warfare. Um, Russia has already put its nuclear... Um, deterrent on a step up in relation to its mobilisation and you just see what the stakes are in this globally. Obviously Ukraine have been calling for a no-fly zone over their country. You can understand why they would. This is existential for them. But the thing that's sitting in the background is if, the, if there is any direct confrontation between NATO and between Russia, because a no-fly zone means shooting down Russian planes effectively, yeah. what we'd be looking at is World War Three, And this is something which I think is kind of lurking in the back of this discussion, which always needs to be drawn out when there's a tendency towards escalation, is that there's a lot at stake. And World War Three with a nuclear armed power, the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world, is certainly not going to help the people of Ukraine, let alone anyone else.